Let's consider this question. You're designing something and it needs to last a really long time, but you know that creep typically occurs in these types of materials over, let's say, decades, like the roof of your home. It bows after 5, 10, 15 years, and you can't sit around and wait that long. So the question is, how do we speed up creep experiments so they don't take so dang long, right? Great question. So what we can do is we can generate stress rupture curves. Stress rupture curves show the following. You're plotting stress versus the stress rupture lifetime, meaning how long did it survive under different conditions. You plot your data at different temperatures. So T1, T2, T3. What do you see? Assuming that T3 is larger than T2, which is larger than T1, that the stress, uh, if you want it to last a certain amount of time, like let's say you want it to last 10 hours, take a look at this. This sample at T3, you can only have it loaded up to a low stress if you want it to last 10 hours. T2 can withstand a higher stress, and T1 can withstand the highest stress. So you can see that if you don't want to wait hundreds or thousands or millions of hours, one thing that you could consider doing is running your experiments at increasingly high temperatures, since we know creep is a thermally activated process. We can just do these at higher and higher temperatures, and that allows us to do accelerated testing, right? So the idea behind this uh, is, is formed in what's called the Larson-Miller parameter. The Larson-Miller parameter allows us to do accelerated testing, right? So here you see a bunch of different materials, and we're plotting the stress on the y-axis. And on the x-axis, you've got the PLM, that's the Larson-Miller parameter. And this, in this case, has been multiplied by 10 to the negative 3, and it has degrees Celsius. So what is this? Well, the Larson-Miller parameter is typically something as follows. It's going to be temperature, usually divided by 1,000, multiplied by this A plus B natural log of T, where A and B are constants for your given material, typically. And T is usually time in hours. T is temperature in Kelvin, right? So how do you use this? Consider the following scenario. Let's say that we have this question. It says, what is the maximum stress in PSI for this iron chain if it's going to be used in a furnace for five years at 600 degrees Celsius? So here we're given the Larson-Miller parameter, right? So L, L, Larson-Miller parameter is equal to the temperature in Kelvin. So we have 600 Celsius. That's going to be 600 plus 273 to turn it into Kelvin, right? Divided by 1,000, right? multiplied by, in this case, for this material, this type of iron, its constants are 36 plus 0 0.78 times the natural log of T, where T needs to be in hours. So we need to go from five years to hours. So five years in one year, there are 365 days. In one day, there are 24 hours. So when we plug this all in, we find that it's 43,800 hours for time, right? When I plug this in for Larson-Miller parameter, I find that it's 38.7, 38.7. So now let's look at this plot. And 38.7 is where? Well, that's 38, that's 39, and that's 40. So 38.7 is going to be maybe around there. We come up to there, and we see that if we want that material to survive five years at 600 Celsius, we better not load it more than, again, if that's maybe 1,500, that's 1,750, maybe 1,800 PSI, PSI units because these people are barbarians instead of using metric, right? Something like 1,800 PSI would be uh, what you would require for this material. So that's an example of how you can do accelerated testing so you don't have to wait tens or hundreds or thousands of hours or days or whatever. You can do accelerated testing by performing your experiments at higher temperatures and generating these sorts of Larson-Miller parameter curves. Once you know those, uh, you can predict performance really far outside of the time limits that you want to wait for.